Hello, everyone. I am so excited today to have you here for our monthly Super Crowd Hour webinar. Uh, our plan tentatively now is for me to do these training sessions myself going forward. I, I feel like I've got a lot of expertise that sometimes I don't get an opportunity to share. And I, I want to make sure that you're getting an organized, deliberate message. And so we'll be doing this uh, kind of this new way going forward. We'll see how you like it. I'd love your feedback. We have people on the show, our, our uh, twice weekly television show all the time, who are experts in all kinds of areas related to crowdfunding. And we'll continue to do that. But we'll use this forum for me to share the insights that I have. And so today I'll be talking about our step-by-step -step guide to raising capital from the crowd. Uh, I'm excited to share this with you and hope that you uh, appreciate what we, we share today. But we're sponsored, and we're so grateful for the sponsorship from uh, our sponsors. But Purpose Rounds is a sponsor. They're transforming customers and community into owners and advocates. Uh, you can learn more at PurposeRounds.com. Halyard Compliance is one of the leading firms providing uh, compliance support to portals and issuers. So if you are running a crowdfunding campaign or running a portal, I encourage you to meet the folks at Halyard Compliance. I also want to acknowledge our supporting co-hosts, Rotary International, Move the Needle with Rob Kaplan, Amoeba, Funding Hope, and Ridgecrest Herbals. They are great partners for us and we appreciate their financial support. We're also grateful for the uh, support of the Crowdfunding Professional Association, the Gig Group, Jenny Casson Group, the Dakin Capital Community Vision Solutions, Crowdfund Main Street, and Crowdmax. I want to thank Chandon for the tremendous work and support that he does on our behalf. He's an extraordinary human being and I'm, I'm grateful for the work that he does. He has remained thoroughly engaged in the, the work and effort that we do over the last 30 days. And if you haven't, if it hasn't registered for you that there is violence and conflict and mayhem in Bangladesh where Chandon lives, I, I invite you to Google that to learn. And, and he's remained diligent despite being under extraordinary circumstances and we're grateful for him and the support that he continues to provide us. Yet in our webinars, we sometimes talk about investment aspects. And I want to just caution that we're not providing investment advice. You should seek investment advice from a, a professional advisor if you want. We're providing information as educational references. We have an exciting rewards program that we established for these webinars, and I want to make sure that you are aware of them and participating if you would like. Our webinars, our Super Crowd Hour webinars, we hold these once a month. And if you register and join the Zoom, you can participate uh, in the webinar from Zoom, and we track your attendance that way. If you just watch on the YouTube player somewhere on social media, we're thrilled to have you. Glad you're here. Glad you're watching the replay on via YouTube. But if you are here in the Zoom room with us, you get credit. Uh, we track that and you get credit toward your $100 reward. And the way that works is we reimburse you $100 for making a crowdfunding investment. We're really trying to catalyze the growth of the industry by encouraging people to invest. It's the best way to help entrepreneurs uh, is to invest. So learn more about the rules at uh, rewards.s, excuse me, rewards.4sc fund. Rewards.4sc fund will get you to the explanation of the rules. Uh, you can uh, register via Zoom at thesupercrowd.com, thesupercrowd.com, and join us in the Zoom room today. We, each month, host a discussion at our Impact Cherub Club. Think of this as small angel investors 
focused on impact. And so angels are people who make direct investments in businesses. Traditionally, those investments are pretty large. But as the Impact Chair of Club, we focus on making small investments uh, so that everyone can participate. We meet every month. We carefully screen and scrutinize offerings, looking for an opportunity to invest for impact. And I'm proud of our, our track record having invested in dozens and dozens of deals over the last several years. We continue to look for more opportunities to support social entrepreneurs. And uh, so if you are interested, visit impactcherub.com, impactcherub.com, and you can sign up to join us. The We're really excited for the opportunity to sh- share some information with you. A lot of you, I think, know me as the the show host, the guy who hosts the webinar, the guy who hosts the the superpowers for good show, the guy that hosts crowdfunding events with the super crowd. And I want to remind you in the olden days, (laughs) I had a, a long and significant finance career. And I bring a lot of genuine firsthand experience that's relevant to investment crowdfunding. I owned and operated, led an SEC registered FINRA member investment banking firm for a number of years. I was the chief financial officer for a global food and beverage company that was the third largest company on the Inc. 500 list in 2009. I was the treasurer of a multinational public company back in the 90s. I'm a best-selling author. My books have been read well over a million times. Um, uh, I produced 1,500 episodes of my show, which you're familiar with, I I suspect. I'm also the chief executive officer of the Super Crowd, Inc. And the Super Crowd did a crowdfunding campaign of its own. So I have brought a lot of, I've gained a lot of insight. Being a participant and leader, I serve on the board of the Crowdfunding Professional Association and have for nearly a decade. I bring a lot of expertise on crowdfunding. Some of that developed from wisdom of others and some from my own uh, deep experience in finance and in crowdfunding. So let me get started on this step-by-step guide to raising capital from the crowd. And if you have questions for me today, I invite you to click on the question mark at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen that says Q&A on it, submit that question and we'll do our best to address that while we're visiting today. Um, And uh, feel free to submit those questions anytime you want. So let's talk a little bit about the context for this. Um, If you're new to crowdfunding, you may not be aware that the laws changed in 2012, which seems like a bit of time ago, but the impact of this has been slow to to propagate uh, across our economy in a full sense. And so this still is very new, right? Think of this marketplace as something like a a toddler, maybe preteen at this point, that still trying to figure things out. But in 2012, a bipartisan effort passed Congress and President Obama signed the Jobs Act and the Securities and Exchange Commission is charged with the primary responsibility for regulating this marketplace. And they have delegated much of their authority to FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. And the importance of that I want to emphasize is that this marketplace is very different from what happens on GoFundMe, very different from what happens on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Uh, This marketplace is for the sale of investment securities. And so it's highly regulated and quite different from donations and rewards crowdfunding. A lot of people in our marketplace want to give it different names. We talk sometimes about community rounds and other labels that are attached to it, but the the law and that governs this practice is called regulation crowdfunding. And so we're the the name crowdfunding, I think, 
sticks. And uh, I don't mind the name at all. I think it describes well what we're doing in this place. But we need to keep in mind that regulated investment crowdfunding is, is different from what happens uh, in other aspects of crowdfunding. And it's carefully regulated. And so we need to re remember that as we engage in these activities. The, the first step of uh, doing a crowdfunding campaign is to figure out what your capacity for this is. And so let me get the, the slides going here. The, 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 your capacity, you want to determine your capacity for the, for raising cap from your community. I really truly believe that virtually anyone can raise money from the crowd, but that doesn't mean you can raise enough. So the first step in trying to figure out how much you can raise is to better understand your community. And it's, you need to be thoughtful about a lot of aspects, but of course it begins with your friends and family. I am personally really believe that you shouldn't be offering securities to strangers that you wouldn't want your friends and family to have. If you don't think you can be successful, if you don't believe in what you are doing enough to sell that to your mother and your brother, I think you should be selling it to strangers, right? That isn't fair. So I really would encourage you to look first at friends and family. And this is a long tradition, right? You know, the, the, the way businesses run so often is that entrepreneurs begin by raising capital from with a friends and family round, right? That's what it's called. So I encourage you to, to start assessing your ability there. Of course, if you have existing customers, they are great participants as well. So give, take a careful look at your account of your customers, not only the all time list, but look too at the repeat customers, really analyze your customer base to determine the potential of engagement with customers, right? You know, your customers, if they're already giving you money, they are really good candidates for investing. Uh, if you have a newsletter, this may not be paying customers, but you may have a long list of people who are interested in your work and you may send them periodic updates. If you don't yet have a newsletter, I encourage, almost no matter what your business is, I encourage you to create one. And if you are a small mom and pop business, a, a, a little restaurant or a local service business, it may only make sense to send out monthly or quarterly updates to your newsletter list. But you want to create a list that would include your customers, but others who may be interested in your service so that you can begin to grow your community. So assess what you've got now and build from there. You also should have a social media presence. And I realize that social media is in so many ways, a distraction, a challenge, a mess. Calling it a cesspool isn't necessarily wrong. But as someone who is in business, having a social media presence is generally a good idea. I could be convinced there are exceptions, but they're rare. I think you want to have a social media presence so that you can connect that way with your customers and people who could potentially become customers. Even if you're a B2B business, it, it probably makes sense because most businesses have a presence online and you can begin to connect that way. And then I think it's important that you uh, assess your ability to communicate with your marketplace. So if you don't have a Christmas card list or some sort of holiday greeting list for your friends and family, if you don't really know how to get in touch with them, except for a few close relatives that you can text, you, 
it may not matter that you have a big family if you don't know how to reach. It. So you got to start organizing that. Uh, assess your ability to get in touch. One of the things that is tempting to do is to look at your connection to a broader community. And it's perfectly valid, right? It makes sense for you to give consideration to uh, things like, are you a, is your business in some way related to the local football team, whether it's the college team or the NFL team? Uh, are you in some way meaningfully connected to a, a large community? Say you're, you're doing something that is a spin out of a church community. That church might have members across the country. Right. So those connections can be meaningful and can extend by orders of magnitude the community you're part of. But you also have to figure out how will you connect with them? And it may be true that it's difficult to impossible. I remember working on a campaign with a church uh, and we thought, well, we'll be able to tap in to membership of this church across the country to support their effort to restore their or organ in this historic church building. And the reality became we couldn't figure out a good way to communicate with those members around the country. And so that plan did not work. If your best route is Facebook advertising, that's not a great plan. That may work. But you want to be sure before you uh, complete your assessment that you can realistically target your target audience via Facebook or other social media ads. And it may be that you can't, right? They're in, in our, under current regulations, right? It's a little bit harder to target people than it was a decade ago when Facebook was a little bit less regulated, you could sometimes target people in ways that we now see inappropriate. So it may be, it may be difficult to reach some of those communities. But if you have a way, uh, if you're tied in enough to that NFL fan base, because you've got a voice, you're a member of a, a, a fan club and you're on the leadership of the fan club, maybe you really can connect in to that entire fan base for the San Francisco 49ers. If you can, right? got to assess your ability to communicate. This is, I've spent a long time on this, but it's so critically important that you look for all the opportunities and really scrutinize that as you go forward. Uh, then you've got to begin looking at your budget, right? So you've assessed your fundraising capacity on the one hand with your group. Now you've got to uh, assess your budget to see how much money you need. And you don't need to necessarily figure out all the money you need ever, uh, but you need to figure out all the money you need to get somewhere, to make some big milestone of progress so that if, if you need more capital, you can raise that capital on better terms, having accomplished something. So maybe you need a hundred and fifty thousand uh, to build a prototype. Maybe you need a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to open your restaurant after having a food truck for years. That's a common one. Maybe you need fifty thousand dollars for a new piece of equipment. Uh, figure out what it is that's driving you, and and be careful to include a cushion for what ifs. Be sure to include all of the realistic needs and also be be thoughtful about where else you can get money right if, if you are buying a building for instance you can probably borrow 60 or 70 percent of the money from the bank there may be other investors who are participating in some way you may have cash in the bank already but you may need to raise an additional cash for the down payment or for improvements or something look at that the net required, but make sure that you shoot for a little more than that as you define your, your capital requirements, your budget needs. And then look at whether or not, as you assess the size of your crowd, 
realistically, you can probably get 10% of a friends and family list to give you a little bit. Uh, and you may be able to identify a rich uncle that you have a good relationship with that could put in a lot of money or a rich aunt, maybe not. But assess all of that and begin to think about, you know, what you can do. You can probably get uh, one or two percent of your customers to invest. You can probably get a little less than one percent of newsletter readers, uh, less than one percent of your social media followers. But if you have 10,000 or 100,000 social media followers, getting a little less than 1%, that might be a lot of people. Uh, so assess your situation, assess your needs, and then you can decide whether you can make enough progress from your crowd against your needs to make this a serious pursuit going forward. Then your next step is going to be to choose a platform. And there are dozens of platforms. And some of the ones that we love include Crowdfund Main Street, SMBX, Honeycomb, Raise Green, Funding Ho. I've done dozens of investments on WeFunder and investments on Republic and Start Engine, Raise Green. Um, I raised my campaign on Crowdfund Main Street. I've invested in a number of deals on SMBX and Honeycomb Credits. There are all kinds of places. Each has a bit of its own personality. Crowdfund Main Street is very oriented towards supporting small businesses, especially women and minorities. Strictly does debt. That's all they will do, period, end of story. And they have a novel feature that they sell in $10 increments and allow you to buy one unit, one $10 bond if you want. And every deal, that's part of their program. It's not negotiable. Honeycomb Credit, much more negotiable, but they're known for doing debt deals. But they do now. They've started doing more equity deals. And so we're seeing some creative deals also on Honeycomb Credit. We funder. Republic and Start Engine, all flexible in what they do. Those three are well known. They're big boys. There are advantages to being on with one of the big boys, but also some challenges. Raise Green is climate exclusive, right? So if you've got a, a project related to climate change, you could go to Raise Green or check out Climatize. Funding Hope, they support us a lot. We're grateful for their support. And, and I would note that they are. Uh, to get traction as a new portal, they are discounting their services pretty significantly right now. So you can save a lot of money if you're doing, especially if you're doing a large raise uh, with Funding Hope. So you got to figure out. And so I would be talking to people who have raised on the portals you're interested in. Talk to the portal owners and operators because you'll be able to connect with people. And it's really easy on LinkedIn to find the people who are connected. I'm happy to introduce you. I know people at virtually all the portals if you need an introduction. Then you've got to get into the work of actually crafting an offering. With the exception, there's no exception. You're always going to have to craft an offering. The portal may have some input and feedback for you. Your attorney is going to help you with this. You don't need to figure it out on your own. I would encourage you not to try to figure it out all on your own. But I think there are two fundamental guiding principles for you to consider in this process. One, do the deal terms work for you? And then does it work for your investors? I see one of the challenges that I see is a tendency. It's not universal, but there's a tendency in among all entrepreneurs to overvalue their businesses. And this creates a bit of a problem, I think, for you in that it makes it difficult to raise future rounds of capital, especially if you're doing equity, because uh, you want to keep control of your business. I get that. But if you don't sell enough, if you don't have a low enough valuation, it'll be hard to raise capital future rounds. And it's tempting to use Y Combinator deals to value your uh, SaaS business that you're developing in the Midwest. And if you're not in the Silicon Valley community, you probably 
don't get the same valuation in the marketplace for a variety of reasons. That community, that ecosystem in Silicon Valley is unique. It meaningfully repopulated in some places like Austin and Silicon Slopes in Utah. New York and Boston have good tech communities where some of that applies. I would still be cautious about applying Silicon Valley valuations to even to your tech business if it's not in Silicon Valley. If you raise, if you sell 10% of your business in each capital raise and you are able to successfully raise at higher valuations, you will create tremendous wealth for yourself. Even if you do five or six rounds of capital, um, that's it, the, the math is magical on that and uh, you should not be too worried. Then you've got to come up with a story and that story can, and in my mind should identify some impact, some social impact. How are you to make the world genuinely better by virtue of what you're doing? And you want to have uh, that story communicated, not just how you're going to make money, but how you're going to make the world a better place. And again, you need to get professional advice. You've got to get a lawyer to help you with this. There are for very small offerings, especially on if you're using a very simple debt approach like on SMBX, you may be able to avoid paying a lawyer a lot of money, but be very careful that you're getting good advice. Then you've got to develop a marketing plan. And I want to emphasize that you're going to do this before you launch the campaign. You've got to have the full plan pretty detailed out. Uh, and so you've got to have a strategy for how and when you're going to hold one-on-one -on -one meetings with key investors. And you want to focus on those people who can for one-on-one -on -one meetings who can uh, contribute more money. You've got to figure out your newsletter, your bulk email strategies, who's going to get what, when. You may want to have more than one list, but certainly you've got to have plan a schedule. And you might even begin drafting it. Part of the marketing plan, draft some of those messages. You can always tweak them as you get down the road. But in, when you're in the middle of the crowdfunding campaign, it's stressful and difficult. There's a lot going on and it's hard to write a new email in that context. You feel like, I've already said everything. When you're beginning, when it's fresh, it's exciting and you're not as stressed out, you can be more creative. And when you're doing this work these days, I really want to encourage you to use ChatGPT. ChatGPT's free tools are remarkably helpful for doing this kind of stuff. Help me write a, an email promoting my business, my crowdfunding offering. Now, don't copy and paste without reading. Read it, edit it, tweak it. But just think how much easier it is to start with a draft, right? And so play around, get learn to be adept at that, and, and you'll be amazed at how that can simplify and ease your uh, burden in putting together this marketing plan you can even start by asking ChatGPT to give you an outline for a marketing plan. Tweak the outline, fix what you don't like, and say, okay, now give me a marketing plan for this part. Give it piece by piece, little bits at a time. It works better if you get it little pieces at a time. But let's say it gives you a 12-point marketing plan, ask it to give you, you fix two of those points, and then you ask it to give you each of those plans individually. And you'll end up with a lengthy, detailed, plan that you can then execute on out, read it, change it. It's your plan. You do whatever you want, but that plan that you create with help from chat GPT can be a tremendous tool. You got to figure out your strategy for PR. Make sure that's part of your plan. You've got to get some public relations, the earned media, as we sometimes call it these days. You've got to figure that out. You've got to have a social media strategy. And again, ChatGPT can help you figure out a lot of this stuff. You don't need to start from scratch. You don't need to start with a blank sheet of paper. Start with using a resource that can be really creative. To the extent, even from the instant you are beginning this process, I would make sure that you are doing as much as you can to build your list, to build your community, that you are not idle while you're doing this, even if even before you launch your crowdfunding campaign, I would caution you to be very careful about what you say about your crowdfunding campaign before 
your live, talk to counsel about what it, it what may be appropriate. It may make sense for you to do a testing the waters campaign to help you prime the pump for your actual campaign. You'll need to get financial statements. And there is right now, there are three two tiers of requirements for um, financial statements for your first campaign. The tier one, first tier is just certified, generally accepted accounting principles, consistent financial statements. You are allowed to certify yourself that they are GAAP compliant, but you should have some reasonable basis for believing that, right? If you have no accounting experience, you should probably have someone else help you prepare those financial statements and tell you that they are GAAP compliant, at least reasonably. If you're going to raise more than $124,000, you will need a, a financial review. Now that sounds pro forma and easy. A review, however, is a very formal procedure conducted by an audit firm. And it has a defined meaning that comes closer to an audit than the word review implies. Uh, it should probably be called almost an audit. So it is an expense. It will cost five to $20,000 to have a review performed typically. So you want to be planned for that in your budget and in in your operations, if you need to do that, if you're going to raise more than 124,000, if you're going to raise more than about 1.24 million or 1.235 million rule, then you will need an audit, a full audit. Typically, for a company that is in business, the audit is $25,000. It can go up almost infinitely for big businesses and big businesses are eligible to do crowdfunding. So it's conceivable, right? If you are a brand new startup, there, there is no exemption. If you form your company today and start a crowdfunding campaign tomorrow or want to, you need an audit. So if your business entity was formed today, you've got to get an audit. And Obviously, an audit on a brand new company is cheaper and easier, but if you want to raise over 1.235, you have to get an audit. If you want to raise uh, over 124,000, but not over 101.235, then you need the uh, review. So plan for that. Let's talk a little bit about the Form C. The Form C is the formal legal disclosure you file with the Securities and Exchange Commission. I have not found a portal that won't do that for you. And they'll typically ask you for the information they need to file it on your behalf, but customarily they will file it for you. I would ask, I would suggest that before you allow them to file, that they show you what they are submitting and give you a chance to edit and approve the final copy. But it will include major components of a business plan, the risk factors that apply to your situation, a variety of specific disclosures with a Q&A format for a lot of the document. And again, as you're writing up a business plan and writing up risk factors, I would encourage you to use ChatGPT. Even the free tools are really helpful uh, for this kind of thing where you are the expert and you can feed the information into ChatGPT and just ask for the text. And you got to audit the text. It's your text. Not Ch ChatGPT is not going to be scrutinized by the SEC. You will be. So you've got to read it thoughtfully and carefully. But it, it's great at writing for you. And so you don't need to spend hours and hours writing this information. You can ask ChatGPT to help you organize and write this step up. Then, after you've done all of this, you file the Form C, you are now launching your campaign. 
I, I would suggest that you set a, a low minimum, but make sure that minimum amount is a, at least meaningful enough to do something. If you end up only reaching your minimum, and that happens more times than it, I wish it did, to entrepreneurs, you've got to make sure that you are glad you did it at that level. Uh, if you're not going to be happy, you did a crowdfunding campaign at your minimum level, raise it. Even if it makes it difficult to get, you, you've got to be glad you did it if you only reach a minimum. Then you got to set a, a high target that's reasonable. Remember the audit requirements. You don't want to set a goal of raising $5 million if you really only need a million because that would mean you're paying for an audit you really don't need. Be wise, but set a high target uh, so that there's room for you to run if you really connect with your audience and your uh, community really shows up for you. It's really important to line up your big investors beforehand. In fact, WeFunder now requires you to do that. It will require you to have at least one uh, lead investor lined up before you uh, launch your campaign so that you are able to say from the first day, there's money in the campaign, you've got some success. I would encourage you to have at least 30% of your minimum goal committed before you launch. So I would say to your portal, let's hold off a few more days if you're not there. You want to have that 30% of your minimum target committed before you start so that when you start talking publicly about your campaign, those who visit your page see that you have already got progress made and they are not the first one. They're not contributing uh, against a whole, a deficit, right? They, you, you want to have that progress to show some momentum. And of course, you'll have written weeks ago a detailed marketing plan. Now is the time to implement the marketing plan. Every step of it, uh, execute fully according to the plan that you created. Uh, then you've got to actually focus on raising the money. And to hear the reality is your marketing plan should be talking through all of this, but now you're doing it, right? And your general rule is to get meetings. And I would focus on one meetings with your larger investors and group meetings for smaller investors. But you, very few people have the chutzpah, the confidence in this process to, because this is still new. 99% of Americans have not made a crowdfunding investment. You're asking them not just to invest in your business, you're asking them to do something they have never done before. Think about that. And ask yourself, have you ever made a crowdfunding investment? If you haven't ever made a crowdfunding investment, remember that's how most of your friends, family, customers, your community, this is all new. So meetings are vitally important. And so you want to be trying to get one-on-one -on -one meetings with people who can invest large amounts. And large is going to differ based on your raise. If you're trying to raise $50,000 for a new piece of equipment in your restaurant, large might be $500. If you're trying to raise $5 million, large might be 10 grand, maybe more. You're going to focus on getting one-on-one -on -one meetings with people who have that kind of capacity. At the same time, you'll be wanting to hold some group meetings, Zoom webinars, a meeting over at your house where you can answer questions with friends and family, invite people to talk to you in a situation where they feel safe and comfortable, and then you can share more information about the offering. Now, you want to be careful outside of a one-on-one -on -one about sharing any information that should only be shared from the portal page. And so be careful about that. You can talk about the business, generally speaking, but deal terms have to be provided by the portal. So be careful never to violate that rule without clear guidance from counsel.
on how to do it right. And of course, throughout this process, you've got to keep mentioning your campaign on social media. You want it prominent on your website. And don't give up. As your deadline approaches, you may feel like, oh man, we haven't made enough progress. We're not far enough toward our goal as we wanted to be. Don't panic and don't give up. The reality is the deadline, the end of the campaign helps move the needle, right? Because as that deadline approaches and you talk to people, a very common question is, what is the deadline? And when you are at the beginning and you say, oh, we've got 90 days, people put it off. When you are toward the end and you say, it's coming up in 13 days, it's coming up in seven days, people take action now. Oh, I better do that today before I forget. I don't want to miss. I don't want to miss out. I don't want you to miss out. So the deadline really will help. So if you, as you approach that deadline, don't panic, lean into it, use that as part of your strategy to raise money. Okay. Closing and beyond. So the closing process can be a little bit tricky. It's not painful because in, in a crowdfunding world now, all of these documents are happening digitally. I will point out, however, that there are a number of people who will start the process and won't finish. And so you'll want to be following up with them throughout the process. And as you have your closing, you'll want to be following up. Sometimes the, the portal will give you a little window of time after the official close to lasso those people who started an investment. Say, I'll put in $100, but then never funded their investment. Uh, you want to follow up. And that's, they had the full intention, apparently, of investing. You want to make sure that you check in with each one that started that process and figure out why they didn't finish. It's oftentimes people who struggle with the technology, right? Some of the people in this country with money have gray hair. And uh, some of the people with money and gray hair had assistants and professionals who helped them with their technology during their career. And if you're five or 10 years past your career, you may never have really become comfortable with technology. Many are, but some are not. And they have money and they want to invest and they're confused by the process. So be patient with them and you get their money. Sometimes when I did my campaign, a number of times I had to schedule a Zoom call and literally walk some of my investors through the process one click at a time with a shared screen so that they could complete their investment. So be patient with people, but you can get that money. So you got to do that exercise at closing. And then you've got to, uh, one of the options is you can have multiple closings. Most portals will let you do this. Talk to them about that as you get up, but you can typically have one closing uh, when you reach your minimum goal and then either periodic or some form of rolling close or at least a second close when you reach a final goal and your deadline. And then you'll have to report to the Securities and Exchange Commission your financial results uh, with a form CAR for one to three years. That's a function your attorney can help you figure out what applies to you. But it's a function of a variety of things, whether or not you have a, a transfer agent in place and how much you raised and such like that. But for small raises, it's typically just one year. But when you file that one year, you need to signal to the Securities and Exchange Commission that this will be your last filing. And if you do the three years at the end of the three, you'll want to signal, we're, I'm not, we're not filing anymore after this. And then you're in compliance. It's important to be compliant. Uh, so that you don't close off the opportunity to do this again in the future. Many of us are going to need to go back to this to raise more money to be successful in the future, often on better terms. Uh, and that's why you don't need to raise all the money in one lump. And I see a number of companies, it's not common, but I've seen a number of companies that have apparently raised all of their investment capital from the crowd and they have raised millions and millions of dollars um, uh, one that I know of has raised over a hundred million dollars over the years, uh, but many have raised tens of millions of dollars, uh, including some 
with tremendous social impact and social impact potentials. You don't want to miss out on the opportunity to go back to the well, do your reporting, be compliant every step of the way. Okay. The key thing I want you to remember here is that you've got this, right? You can do this. This is not especially challenging. You can do it. So with that, I'm happy to take questions. I didn't see any come in while we've been talking, but if you have a question for me, let me know. I'd be happy to take your questions before we wrap up. But I really appreciate your being here. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share these insights. I hope you find them helpful and look forward to connecting with you in the future. You can reach me. And I just got kind of to put it in the chat. For all of the, you who are here online, I'll put my email in the chat and you can feel free uh, to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have as a follow-up. Of you who are watching on YouTube, I encourage you to follow me, subscribe there on YouTube. We've got a lot of great content we put out at least one video every single day. Uh, and 90% of it roughly is crowdfunding related. You'll find it really helpful and interesting. So I encourage you to subscribe there. You can also follow us on social media. We'd love to have you there. Everybody, thank you very much for being here with us. With that, we'll call it good and we'll see you next month.